And here we have Always Forever. <clears throat> Let's begin. Give me a second. Gotta turn away from the microphone to puke rainbows, as always. And I need to stop moving the fucking chair. All right, you and me, always, forever. Annan, open the door. We can stay alone together. Can you hear me, Annan? Annan, you and me, Annan, I... The door swung open bef before Trixie could finish her sentence. Oh, I forgot how's Trixie. I gotta do Trixie's mannerisms. Yeah, let me practice for a second. Uh, Annan. Annan. Uh, Annan. Sort of, sort of like that, I guess. Always, forever. Annan looked awful. His white coat was unbrushed. A dark, oversized hoodie and beanie he, he still apparently insisted on wearing smelled foul. And the circles under his deep set eyes, kind of like mine, made his already empty stare even more ghoulish. Kind of like mine. <laughs> Trixie didn't understand why he didn't just throw away those rags and get something classy, like a cape. She could see an mouthing word, words, but the music drowned them out. Turn the music down! Turn it down! Annan sluggishly throttled chair, trotted to the cube playing the music and fiddled with it until the song faded into merely being in the background. Better. Why on Equestria would you play something so loud? I've never had a neighbor so outrageously inconsiderate. I was practicing my act. God, excuse me. Oh, God. I was practicing my act and I could hardly hear myself think. Sorry, a dusty apology came from Annan's mouth. It sounded like a bird imitating pony speech. Or like some someone not used to saying much anything at all. Kinda like me. <laughs> Trixie forced a smile onto her lips, reminding herself of her plan. It's okay, but you should make it up to me. She held out a hoof. I am Trixie, Trixie Lulamoon, but most ponies call me the great and powerful Trixie. Anon Anonymous, you have already heard about me, I guess. Annan replied, slowly re re <laughs> can't say words that are slightly complicated. Re I don't know how to pronounce this reciprocating the hoof shake. His beanie drooped over his eyes slightly. He didn't smile. She nodded, her smile with her widening. This is going to be this was going to be too easy. I saw you with Twilight the day you came. I happen to live close by, and since we're neighbors, I are you the one that lives in that kooky caravan that peered outside my house? Kooky caravan? Trixie choked out the question. Yeah, the tacky purple one with stars that I never see anyone leaving or entering. I've started wondering if it's abandoned, but I swear it moves sometimes. No, no, Trixie has no knowledge of this caravan. Ch I mean, I live somewhere else, but close. Okay, this is just starting to creep me out. I don't know who to ask about it, though. I felt like I'm being watched, man. Sounds insane. Annan let out a world-weary sigh and turned a knob on the music cube. The song grew a little louder again. You know I'll keep you in my luck and... Chixie wouldn't worry about it. Who, who would watch you? There's no reason for anybody to do anything like that. <laughs> Yeah, you're right. 
It's not important enough for a conspiracy, Annan said, a profoundly sad look on his face. He sat down on his bed. You could tell how much of a wreck Annan was just by taking one look at, at his house. Everything was in disorder. Unwashed dishes lay haphazardly from the floor to the nightstand, and bags of garbage and unread papers took up most, every, most of the walking space. Annan was so miserable that uh, Trixie that Trixie couldn't help but to smile to herself. At least she wasn't that bad. Trixie came here to give you a choice, Annan, and and you have to take this chance because of your loud music ruined Trixie's practice. Annan looked up at her, his dead eyes looking slightly confused. Yes, a chance, she announced. I've heard about how I've heard about how Twilight and her friends are visiting you less and less. They think you don't want to be helped, and they've given up on being friends with you. That's for the better. They shouldn't associate themselves with someone like me. But I, the great and powerful Trixie, has devised something wonderful for you, Annan. A small card zapped into existence in front of Annan's eyes and fell into his lap. He looked down at it. It read, Ponyville Park, sundown. Meet Trixie there tonight. Be there. When he looked back up, Trixie was already running back to her caravan. She had cast the silent teleportation spell right at, just at the right moment when Annan had looked at a card. And she was sure she had been thorough... This water I'm drinking is causing this to happen to me. She had cast a silent teleportation spell just as at the right moment when Annan had looked at a card. And she was sure that he had been thoroughly impressed, no, enchanted, by her mysterious disappearance and invitation. She, and so she prepared for a big show at sundown. Bella Lugosi's dead. The bats have left the bell tower. <laughs> I wish I was dead, too. I don't know why that pony lied to me about not living in the caravan. I saw her run into it and slam the door from my window. Maybe she was mocking me. <laughs> Damn it. Even these small technicolor horses are mocking me. I pressed my face into my pillow in shame. Strewn with time's dead flowers. Suddenly becoming a pony was shocking enough. If I couldn't fit in on earth, how did I fare here? Bereft in deathly bloom. The answer was not well, not well at all. Alone in a darkened room. I again examined the card she had left me with. Ponyville Park, sundown. Why hasn't she just told me where to meet up? Why was she so insistent on making a fool of me? I suppose I deserved it. I hadn't ma made it anything of myself since appearing in Boneville, and I'm sure rumor spread fast in a small town like this. The only reason I can even afford to live here was because of Twilight Sparkle. I was a leech. This is partly why I haven't left my house during the day for anything except groceries every few weeks. Ponies judged me everywhere I went, and I could tell. Even if they smiled to my face, I could hear them mocking me in their heads. There goes Annan, that creepy hermit. Did you hear he doesn't have a job? <laughs> no way, at his age. Isn't he ancient? He looks like he's dying. No, I'm serious. He doesn't even have a cutie mark. Did you hear that, children? They'll <laughs> never become like, like Annan. They thought those kind of kind of they thought those kind of things. I'm sure. And when they came back home to their families, they would tell them of Annan, the weirdo shut-in who can't who can't look people in the eye because he hates himself too much. Yeah, that's why I haven't why I make it a policy not to go outside. 
or to make friends for that matter. I don't need anyone to be friends with me out of pity. They'll just end up hurting themselves. I need to stop doing that. I sleep 16 hours a day. And at this point, they'll conserve energy. I guess this Doomer Annan is a snoozer Annan as well. It's probably better if I just pass away in my sleep and don't bother anyone again. Okay, I feel sorry for the pony that will have to scrape my death stain off the floor, though. Back on Earth, I watched a Japanese documentary about people who die alone in their apartments and nobody checks on them for years, so their fat and other poor putrid corpse juices have to be cleaned by a special company. I wonder if companies like that exist here in Equestria. Oh. Hmm. I shambled over to my window to watch the lone caravan next to my house. I wonder if she has a job. Of course she does. She has a cutie mark. I feel stupid and hit my head against the window frame a couple times. The pain grounds me. I use it. I used to do it when I was a little kid, but it's been popping up again as a habit when I'm stressed. I'm stressed a lot nowadays. Apparently they don't sell cigarettes in Equestria. Now oh, let's need to stop drinking the water. Fuck, fuck, fuck. Do I go? I want her to leave me alone. What did she mean by giving me a chance? She's probably just... To, she'll probably just mock me again. <laughs> yeah. There's no use in going. But if I stand her up, won't she, won't she be angry? She'll come back. Or, or worse, she'll set my house on fire. No. That's an overreaction. You may be slime, but... No one would want to kill you over that. Or would they? Would anyone really care if Anne and the Freak's house burned down overnight? Would anyone ask any questions? Maybe uh, not. Maybe it's better not to anger her. <laughs> I don't mind dying. But revenge is scary. I'm running out of apple cider, too. At least I uh, have alcohol here, and if I was deprived enough of, of both of that and cigarettes, I might go completely mad. Well, Lagosi's dead. I grabbed one of my last bottles and bit the cap off. Undead, undead, undead. I'll go. The uh, third song is uh, uh, the Watashi no theme. That's, I guess, supposed to be playing. Sweat trickled down Trixie's brow as she bowed to a non-existent audience. Kind of like how I'm doing right now. Thank you. Thank you, everybody. You're too kind. The great and powerful. That's me, Trixie. Her cloak flu fluttered in the cool park breeze as she looked at the horizon. The sky was orange and the burning tatters of red clouds hung in in the distance like strange curtains. She smirked to herself. She had practiced all day after seeing her stage up for the show, after setting her stage up for the show. It was going to be the best one she had ever done. Annan would be so impressed he'd practically be begging to become her assistant. Everyone who'd come to see would be mystified, mesmerized, and... Mm, Trixie couldn't think of another appropriate M-word, so she frowned. She would show Twilight that know-it-all. God. Trixie would not only befriend Annan, she would become his best friend. And so the great and powerful Trixie would humiliate Twilame Spark Old, beating her at her own game. <laughs> She couldn't wait to see the look of shock and defeat on her irksome rival's face. Trixie began using her magic to clean the stage of props. The sun had begun to set, set 
so ponies would begin showing up any time now. It would be a lot of ponies, since you'd personally hoofed out free tickets with invitations to tonight's show to most of Ponyville, a part of our ingenious marketing strategy and rebranding campaign. She had to hurry up to set everything back up. The park would be so crowded, she'd look, she'd look foolish if she hadn't, hadn't gotten prepared by then. There, already. Wait, no, already. She'd be hurriedly disappeared behind her purple stage curtains. They'd come any time now, and in two. Trixie wrote in the note that he had to come, so he would. That's how that works, I guess. After a while, she peeked from behind the curtains at her audience, or the lack thereof. Nobody had come yet. Only the setting sun winked at her in the distance. It was getting dark now. Heavy shadows of trees stretched across the path up to her stage, the path no one was walking. Had she written the time right, or maybe she messed up the location? No, no, she was sure she hadn't. They would, they would show up. Ponies were often tardy. This wasn't all that strange. She just had to be patient. There, there, pony. Trixie popped her head out from behind the curtains, her smile returning to her, only for it to dissolve into slut disappointment as she realized it was some pony she didn't know. Walking the dog late in the evening. And they walked right past her stage without giving it a second look. And didn't they see the lights? The signs? Why wasn't Eddie Pony here? Why? It was getting really dark. The sun was nowhere to be seen, and no pony had come. Trixie had sat down on her prop chest, her limbs going slack, and her hat drooping down over her face. No pony had come. Then Trixie heard something. Hoof steps. Some pony was walking in the park. She peeked from behind the cur between the curtains and this time saw someone she recognized. It was Annan. He shuffled in the darkness, slowly weaving behind between the trees. Tr slowly weaving between the tr trees with unsteady steps head turning from side to side as if looking for something. He seemed to spot the, car the stage and Trixie hid behind the, the curtains. No, 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 no. She could feel her face flushing. No one but Annan had come. He was going to see that and conclude that Trixie was an unpopular embarrassment. This was no good. She had to think. She could hear Annan's footsteps getting closer. Think think. Then they stopped. Her curiosity got the better of her, and she <clears throat> and she peeked carefully from between the curtains. Annan was standing in front of the stage in his usual usual hoodie and beanie, looking up at the decorations Trixie had hung above the stage. He seemed to be waiting for something to happen. Trixie swallowed. Wait a minute. Only way to not embarrass herself for to be put on a great show. A show that would absolutely blow Anna away. Yes. She drew a deep breath and stepped out from behind the curtain. Fillies and gentle coats. The powerful, I'm, I mean the great and powerful Trixie. She bit her lip. She could feel Anna looking up at her. She couldn't meet his eyes. She didn't want to think about what kind of expression he might be wearing. Disappointment? Disgust? Tonight's show is full of the mystical, and Twilight hopes to start out with a bang. She raised her hoof up, hooves up, and mm, at which point fireworks were supposed to shoot out from behind the stage, but they didn't. Trixie had forgotten to set them up in the correct places, because of how nervous and excited she had been. She felt her face burning up with shame. Anyhow, uh, behold, as I make this rope, 
She took off her hat and rope levitated out of it. As I make it dance, the rope turned into a snake, which slithered across the stage for a while and then tur returned back into her hat. Good. At least that had worked. But as Trixie adjusted her hat back onto her head, she felt what was what had supposed to have turned back into rope slither against her horn. Yeah. <laughs> Reflectively, she squealed and threw her hat off in panic. If it and the snake flew off the stage. The snake hit the ground and slithered away into the night. Trixie wanted to close her eyes. She was shaking. She didn't want to look at Annan, but she had to salvage her act. <laughs> Trixie meant to do that. Did you get scared? She struck a pose, flourishing her cape before pulling an envelope from a hidden pocket. She presented it, holding the envelope in the air dramatically. Trixie needs a volunteer for her, this next trick. She smiled as widely as she possibly could. Her lips felt dry. For this next trick, a volunteer. From the audience, she repeated herself. She was trying not to... She was trying not to meet Annan's eyes, trying not to, to see his expression. She looked just above it at his beanie. How about you in the back, the one with the beanie? Come on, come on up. Her smile felt ugly to her. Come on. Why wasn't Annan coming? Trixie will make this envelope appear in your hat, so she needs a volun... She felt something warm run down her face. Her words were struggling to escape her throat. Vol volun... She was choking on them, choking and shaking violently. This used to happen to her a lot as a filly. Volun... When had Annan climbed onto the stage, he got very close, right in front of Trixie, and then suddenly his hooves were around her. Annan was hugging the great and powerful Trixie. I had to stop and take a break, so uh, let's continue. Give me a second. <coughs> mm. Okay, yeah, Annan was hugging the great and powerful Trixie, all right. Uh, how did I get myself in this situation? Maybe I thought that if I could make at least one crying girl smile, maybe my life would mean something. Maybe my body just acted on its own. I was naive. <clears throat> the shaking girl I had just hugged was now looking at me in fear as if I had done something unthinkable. I didn't know what to say. My lips moved to apologize, but no sound left them. I was dehydrated and drunk. I, I've never been good with, with situations like these anyways. No, no, don't look at Trixie like that. You're not supposed to look at Trixie like, like that. She wailed and took a step back. Her eyes were wide, her expression bewildered, and her lower lip was quivering. What do you mean? I managed to ask. You, you can't st stop, she screamed, tears running down her face as she averted her eyes. What did she mean? Was I that out of line? Looking at you, how? I don't understand. I mumbled and stepped forward. I think I wanted to help, to calm her down at least. But she kept shaking her head and backing away. The envelope she held fell onto the stage. She swallowed, her face twisted into an expression of disgust and horror as she made eye contact with me. Like you're pitying, Trixie, she spat out, then covered her mouth with a hoof. Her covered her mouth with a hoof her eyes widening as if she had just as she, as if she had taken aback by her own words huh trixie was supposed to pity you she selected you to graciously offer a helping hoof to you a miserable no pony 
She knows how awful Annan is. She's seen it. Annan is the worst pos pony she could possibly find. She was going to amaze and dazzle Annan with her magic. She, then Trixie wouldn't. Then the girl turned around quickly and galloped into the night, sobbing hysterically. I was left standing dumbfounded on the silent and empty stage. Empty, except for that envelope. I bent over to pick it up, not knowing how to feel. For Annan. So it was meant for me. I opened it and folded the paper inside open. Disagreement for friendship is made by and between Anonymous, hereby referred to as Subject A, and Trixie Lulamoon, hereby referred to as Subject B, which states, 1. Subject A shall not dislike Subject B. 2. Consequently, Subject A will gradually become to like Subject B. 3. Those feelings will remain perpetual. 4. Those feelings will never change at any time. 5. In times of loneliness, both parties will stay by each other's side. 6. However, this is always the case for Subject B. Therefore, Subject A will always remain at the side of Subject B. Please sign here if you agree to these friendship terms. Oh, Trixie. Out of every pony in Equestria, Trixie was the last Twilight would have stopped to talk to had she seen her. The two did not get along well. However, this night she had done just that. On her way home from Pinky's big party, Twilight had spotted the uncharacteristically mis miserable looking Trixie staring into the water at the outskirts of Ponyville. When she had asked if Trixie was okay, the mare had burst into a fit of ugly crying. Trixie, tw tw Twilight didn't need much more evidence to form the hypothesis that Trixie indeed was not okay. So she had insisted Trixie come over and explain. It had begun raining on their way back to the Golden Oak. <clears throat> God. <sighs> Spit some out. The raindrops drummed away at outside as Twilight furrowed her brow in concern, trying to understand the situation. One more second, please. I don't have the virus. I'm okay. I'm not sick. Sorry. Please, Trixie, just tell me what happened. I promise it'll make you feel better. Here, be careful with this. It's still hot. Trixie brought the cup of steaming hot chocolate to Trixie with her magic. She'd sat, down, sat her down on a couch and given her a fuzzy striped blanket to cocoon herself in. The mare was still refusing to explain what exactly had made her like this. God, I'm disgusting. Twilight had gathered it had something to do with Annan, though. Every time she brought him up, Trixie had tensed up and looked away, as if in pain. Minutes crawled by with only the steady downpour outside to fill their mutual silence. Then Trixie's lips parted to form a question. Is Trixie a worthless pony? What? Am I a useless, awful pony, Twilight? She looked Twilight in the eyes. Twilight flinched. There was something nauseating about how earnest that question sounded. The desperate look in Twilight's violent the desperate, oh shit, the desperate look in T Trixie's violet eyes was, So that's it then. That's why no pony came to my show, Trixie said, her voice cracking with a sad forced laugh. No, who would make you think you're worthless? I didn't know you had a show. Trixie invited you. Hot chocolate splashed onto the blanket. Truth be told, Twilight hadn't checked her mail in a few days. Sorry, I didn't know. When was it? I'll come to your next one. It was tonight, and there won't be a next one. Trixie is done with magic. Trixie is... I'm, I'm done with everything. 
I'm so sorry. I, she swallowed. Apparently, Trixie had been totally unaware of Pinky's big party tonight. Had she not been invited? Oh. But you're amazing at magic. You can't quit. Besides, don't you love performing? Magic is in your cutie mark. Trixie shook, shook her head, looking down into her cup. Friendship is magic, Twilight. You know this. Okay. <laughs> she smiled sadly. Trixie has no friends. That's not true. What about, um, well, I'm your friend, Trixie. We both know that's not true, Twilight. Oh, no, the burping's coming on again with the water I drink. <clears throat> oh, we, we both know that's not true, Twilight. I'm, I'm sorry for bothering you. Thank you for the hot chocolate. Trixie placed a cup down and got up. Twilight didn't know what to say. What could she say? That horrible look in Trixie's eyes made all that Twilight could think to say feel fraudulent. It reminded her of Annan. Are you going to go home then? You should at least wait until it stops raining. I can't go home. Annan... Annan? I was just thinking of finding... Of just finding a tr tree with enough cover, Trixie mumbled. What was that about, Annan? Didn't he say something mean to you? I keep telling him he needs to stop being so distant and cold, and Annan didn't say anything. Trixie's shout made Twilight jump a little. Sorry if I don't convey any of this properly. I can't. I live with other people, I can't be loud. I'm doing this in the dead of night because it's the only opportunity I really have without embarrassing myself with <laughs> pony fan fiction. <laughs> da -da. I'm just worried he'll come and talk to me and I, I don't think I can handle that right now. <laughs> All right. Don't you think it might be good to talk things out? Trixie looked away. I think I, I don't like myself, Twilight. Thunder rumbled in the darkness outside. Fine, then you're staying here until you can talk to Annan properly. I told you, I don't want to bother you. I'll find somewhere to... Trixie tried to open the door with her magic, but Twilight slammed it shut. No, you're staying here. I'm not going to let you wander off into the night like this. We might not be best friends, but I still care about you, Trixie. But, no buts. I have an extra bed for sleepovers. Deal with it. Trixie stood in front of the door as if, in, as if frozen in time for a long moment. I have no choice. That's right. Put my hoof down. Thanks, Twilight. Trixie smiled just a little. And I forget the order of the songs. Another one's playing. Oh dear. I don't have it up. It's just, all I see is just a YouTube link without a title next to it. What does it mean to be unhealthy, badly, my love? Fate has a strange way of being cruel to those who lean on it. To be in a bad state so well. Or something along those lines. The dull throbbing in the front of my head reminded me of reality. My pity party didn't feel nearly as poignant now as I had slept the alcohol off. I turned my head on the grass, squinting my eyes at the obnoxiously rising song. Trixie's caravan was still that there where she'd left it, and so was her stage. Truth be told, I was starting to get worried. I got up and knocked on the caravan door, not really expecting an answer. The door moved at my touch. It was unlocked. 
Dare I? Well, she called me awful. I might as well act the part. Besides, maybe there'd be some clue in her home as where she'd gone. I let myself in. Honey, I'm home. It was a stupid joke, but no one was around to hear it, thankfully. The first thing that stuck me, struck me, was how shabby the caravan was. It was too tiny to be considered a home, even for ponies. I felt crumbs of something underneath, under my hooves, and a faint odor lingered in the caravan. Stale peanut butter. A peculiar pile of rotten apple cores stared at me from a corner, almost accusingly. Stage magic props were lined up haphazardly against the wall walls, and one and one sad sleeping bag lay on the bare wooden floor in front of me. Tucked into the sleeping bag was a raggedly stuffed toy unicorn with buttons for eyes. It looked a little like Trixie. A, simp a single brush and a cracked vanity mirror lie next to the sleeping bag. The floor was covered with drawn flyers and notes. Plans for posters, scrapped invitations, ideas, and acts. I picked up a little notebook that read, Great and Powerful Magic Trick Ideas, on the cover, and flipped through a few pages. How to levitate upside down, how to turn audience into clouds, and the rope turning into a snake trick was here, as well as how to make a friend that won't abandon you. My mouth felt so dry and the words so ho hollow spoken out, s out loud. Oh. Drafts of the friendship contract were written here, as well as ideas for delivering it to me. It, it had many more failed iterations than the other tricks. Most were crossed over with notes like, not impressive, obvious, or stupid. There were also pages on why I th was the right subject for the trick. My routine, mental profile, reasons for why she thought I wouldn't get bored of being her friends, planned activities together. I turned a page and the revisions kept going. Another, still going, another and another. Finally, it ended on the version of the contract she had meant to give me and the method of delivery. On the page next to it was another trick. How to make Trixie disappear forever. Without realizing it, I hurled the notebook across the caravan and there it hit a wall. Fuck, 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 fuck. Bang, bang, bang. My forehead collided with the caravan wall harder than ever, but I didn't feel a thing. Not physically, anyways. Blood trickled down from under my beady down to my nostrils. I snorted, gritted my teeth, and tried to control my sporadic breathing. She wouldn't. I didn't want to read that last trick. Had I been completely mistaken about Trixie, I hated how much I related to the squalor she lived in. I hated that I hadn't noticed anything. I had been too self-absorbed to. She wasn't a proud bully. She was afraid. And I'm afraid too. I'm a coward. I'm afraid all the time. I'm too afraid to trust in others, too afraid they'll hurt me. At least she's trying, despite how afraid she is, she's trying. Damn it. Damn it. I stomped out of the caravan and violently slammed the door shut. I was starting to feel pain again. The throbbing in the front of my head was now both internal and external. The painful fire that had been dormant in me for A painful fire that had been dormant in me for years now blazed. As I wiped the blood from my face on the sleeve of my hoodie, I made a resolution. Trixie. Trixie? Trixie, are you awake? Trixie. Trixie rolled in her bed and groaned, pulling the pillow over her ears. I'm coming in. Twilight's voice announced. I thought both of those beds were next to each other. Or am I crazy? Whatever. 
That doesn't matter. Wait a minute. I'm coming in. The light, light shone into the pitch black room as Twilight opened the door. For Celestia's sake, it's well past noon, Trixie. Twilight levitated the pillow off of Trixie's head. Please turn the light off. Forming words was hard. It took so much effort. Kind of like me. <laughs> Did you even hear me? It's past noon. What have you done all day? Twilight sighed. Look, Trixie, I know you're sad, but you can't keep being like this. It's been over a week, don't you think? Trixie sat up in her bed. You're telling Trixie to leave. No. I'm say I'm trying to say that maybe it's time you talk things out with Annan. Or at least go back home and start doing magic again. Trixie shook her head and but got out of bed. I can't talk to Annan. I'll go somewhere else. I don't need my caravan anymore anyway. I'm done with magic. Stop saying that. You all know that's not what you really think. Do you think Trixie likes saying it? It's the truth. No, it isn't. No pony likes me. They think I'm a joke. Hannon has been looking for you. The despair on Trixie's face froze. She then hung her head. He has? Why? I don't know. Why don't you ask him for yourself? Twilight said angrily. When Trixie didn't say anything, he only looked more guilty. Twilight relented. He got a job, you know. Annan did. Trixie's eyes widened in disbelief. Where? Sugar Cube Corner, Pinkie Pie told me. You're joking. Annan could never work with her. She's way too... Well, he barely ever even goes outside. He's been changing that. I talked with some ponies a day and heard how Annan has been going door to door asking for you all around Ponyville. Trixie's jaw dropped. That's actually a part of what I came to tell you. Twilight shifted awkwardly. I ran in into Annan today. He asked if I had seen you and I told him you were staying here. He's coming here after work to see you. You did what? Sounded like Ron Weasley for a second there. I'm sorry. <laughs> you can't stay cooped up like this, Trixie. And, and I couldn't just lie to Annan. And I need to... There we go. Ugh. Yes, yes, you could have. Very easily. Twilight looked a little guilty. I'm leaving. I can't talk to Anna now. What? But you have to. He looked so happy when I told him you were here. He's been looking everywhere for you. When is he coming? How, how soon does his shift end? He didn't say, but it could be any time now. That's usually when the doorbell... That's the... The doorbell rang. Trixie jumped. Oh, what, what do I do? I look terrible. I feel terrible. I can't let him see me like this. It'll be fine, Trixie. Just be yourself. I hate myself. I... Ugh. She gave Trixie an apologetic look. Come in, Twilight yelled and hurried downstairs to open the door. Trixie's heart was beating faster than, than any pony heart should be able to beat. Annan was looking for her. Why? She had thoroughly embarrassed herself in front of him, then insulted him on top of that. Annan had a job. Had he gotten his cutie mark too? Was Annan friends with Pinky now? She felt moisture build up in her eyes and rubbed it away quickly. The approaching voices of Twilight and Annan. Oh dear, I lost my place. God damn it. Oh no. The approaching voices of Twilight and Annan were st saying something downstairs now. Trixie looked for an, ex an escape. The window! She pulled aside the curtains and opened the window, peering down. The drop wasn't too bad. It was only the second floor, after all. 
I don't think there's a third floor, but whatever. She heard Annan's hoofsteps in the stairway, then in the hallway, approaching the door now. Trixie leaped out of the window. She landed on the muddy ground without injury, softening her fall with magic, then f began frantically looking for a dis direction to escape. Sometimes I do well, and then sometimes I keep tripping over my words. Trixie! She... She... No, that, that spelled wrong. She heard Annan call her name from above. She didn't want to look to face him. Thump. But that loud sound made her turn her head. It was Annan. He had jumped after her, except with no magic to soften the landing. Trixie went pale and bolted. She had felt her mud-caked hooves raking against stony earth as she galloped as fast as she could. She still heard the pleas and labored breathing of Anna not far behind her. Where are you going? She didn't know, but she didn't care. She just wanted to get away, to hide. Water splashed as she cut through a large rain puddle. The wind howled in it in her flattened ears and blew her tangled mane backwards wildly. Branches beat against her coat as she ducked and weaved. Duck and weave, bitch. I'm sorry. Serious. <laughs> ducked and weave between shadows and trees. Please! Twigs broke under her hooves. The red and orange tinted fall leaves crinkled and were sent flying as she dashed through them. She heard Annan's voice behind her grow more distant. She was getting away. Good. That's what she wanted. His voice grew even more distant. She wanted that. Then nothing. She stopped. Did she want that? Slowly, Trixie turned. And that's when she registered where she was. The Everfree Forest. One second, please. Annan? The panic set in quickly. Had Annan gotten lost or hurt? He had no magic to defend himself with, and she had led him such to a, to a, such a dangerous place. <clears throat> Jesus. If something happened to him, it would be her fault. Her stupid fault. Annan! Annan, where are you? She began tracing her steps back feverishly searching for any sign of Annan. The forest was dark and oppressive even during daytime. She wasn't sure she could even defend herself well enough if some beast attacked her. Could she defend Annan even? Trixie? Trixie heard Annan's unsure voice call ahead call out to her. Yes, Trixie is coming. She hurried towards the voice, pushing low low hanging branches out of the way. And then she saw him. Annan was slumped on the ground, covered in mud, with his back leaning against a large gnarled elm. <clears throat> when when Trixie got closer she saw how oddly his left leg was bent. Annan did you hurt yourself? He grimaced in pain, then forced a smile and met Trixie's eyes. Yeah, Damn root tricked me, tripped me. I'll be fine. I just need to gather myself. It, it hurts, but it's probably not broken. Probably? That doesn't sound good at all. Does it hurt badly? Trixie rushed to Annan's side, not knowing what to do. <clears throat> Annan had hurt himself because of her stupid stunt. This is why she didn't have friends. She didn't deserve them. She only ended up hurting ponies. It hurts a little, but that's fine. I'd be more concerned if it didn't. It is good sometimes. <clears throat> Trixie gritted her teeth and fought back the tears welling up in her eyes. But I'm 
Glad, Trixie. I, I needed to talk to you. Trixie, sorry. She swallowed that painful lump of emotion in her throat. She didn't know how to feel. Ooh, ooh. Tr Trixie is... Look, there's no need. Don't apologize. I, I get it. At least I think I do, finally. Annan took a deep breath and a strange forlorn smile settled on his lips. That smile was so unfamiliar on his face, it made Trixie uneasy. What could Annan possibly have to say to her? A crimson leaf fell on top of Annan's beanie as he rested his head against the ancient bark of the tree. As Trixie watched him, she noticed how much younger he seemed now. The wary look in his eyes was gone, replaced by an attentive calm. I have something to give you, Trixie. Uh-huh. Now? Anna nodded and reached into his hoodie pocket, digging around for something. He began humming a familiar tune as he did so. Trixie went pale when Anna took the envelope from his pocket. She recognized it as the envelope she had meant to give to Anna during the act. The envelope with the contract. A thousand horrible scenarios popped into Trixie's head instantaneously. Did, did you read? To Trixie's horror, Anna nodded. Go on, take it. She shook her head vigorously, now sweating in fear and shame. You, you don't have to give it back. It's okay, just burn it or something. I'm sorry, I, I know it was really stupid. I should have... I'm pretty awful, huh? Annan was still holding out the envelope. No, really, just throw it away. You don't have to return a piece of trash. Trixie's lower lip was quivering. This was the worst feeling. Feeling. Annan had went out of his way to reject her directly, to make sure there was no delusion on her part. It was the honest thing to do. The kind thing. Pinky was sure to be a good friend to Annan, better than she could ever be. Annan was a good, was an honest, good pony. Open it, Trixie, please. She took the envelope. Annan began lightly singing as she held the envelope. She recognized the song. It was the one Annan had been listening to when she first spoken to him. The name Annan had been crossed out with a marker and the envelope was now assigned to the great and powerful Trixie. Trixie opened with the envelope slowly, then shakily folded the letter open. Ooh. Yeah. Dear Trixie, while I appreciate your efforts, your previous contract was laughable and severely lacking in various areas. In the interest of both parties, I devised a new agreement which I hope you will find satisfactory and desirable. Agreement for mutual friendship and prosperity. This agreement is made by and between Anonymous, hereby referred to as Lord Anonymous, and, and Trixie Lulamoon, hereby referred to as Shy Dumbass. One, Lord Anonymous likes Shy Dumbass. Therefore, he will treat her with kindness and understanding. Two, Lord Anonymous will not pity Shy Dumbass. Subsequently, Shy Dumbass will offer the same courtesy to Lord Anonymous. Three, the two will remain together in times of loneliness, strife, and peril. Not out of pity, but compassion and camaraderie. Four, Shy Dumbass will try her best not to worry about being abandoned, because Lord Anonymous will remain at her side to the Heat death of the universe. Effective duration of agreement. Always forever. Sign here if you agree to these friendship terms. Below already was Annan's own signature. Trixie trembled and clutched the contract that she, when she finished reading. Trixie is not shy. That's all she could muster to say. What was this? What was this feeling? Annan didn't hate her after all? 
You wanted to be friends with her. How could that be? She looked at Anon, who was still leaning on the tree. He was smiling faintly and looked at, looked at the ground with hooded eyes. You'll sign it, right? I want to be friends, Trixie. I like you. He likes Trixie. She felt a tear roll down her cheek, and then another. Those words felt so surreal. For a moment, she thought she was going to hurl, and then she broke down. She collapsed where Anna sat, wrapped her hooves around him unthinkingly, and bawled, burying her head in his torso. The burning tears flooded her eyes in an unbroken, prickling stream of pent-up emotion. She tried to form sentences, but couldn't. All she could do was sob between ugly whimpers of, of apology and thanks. Trixie felt Annan's hooves wrap around her. This time she didn't recoil at them. This time was different. She was shaking. Her heart was beating as fast as a small bird's. Her tangled mane possibly smelled awful. She must have sounded horrid. But the hooves around her didn't pity her. They held fast. They were merciless. They were her friend's hooves. She clinged on, gritting her teeth in inexplicable anguish and joy. Her. Her friend. An unsteady, gradual heartbeat sounded against her ear, and she listened. After her sobbing had quieted down, Annan gently ruffled her mane with a hoof. Your horn is hurting my ribs, dumbass. Trixie laughed into Annan's hoodie. She laughed. Genuinely. I walked ten thousand miles, ten thousand miles to see you. Trixie really likes this song. Why don't you play more songs like this? <laughs> I don't know. I guess I didn't have that, though. No. I don't know. I guess I don't have that many happy songs saved. How's the act coming together? It'll be great. You'll be blown away, I swear. Great and powerful? <laughs> I'll show you. I laughed as Trixie, at Trixie as she flourished her cape at me. Oh, I don't doubt that. I'm hanging or, handing out invitations at work. P Pinky said it was okay and even insisted on promoting the big show herself. Really? I nodded as I prodded up the ladders next to the stage and began to attach the brand new purple curtains. My legs still hurt a bit, but that was on me. I had the cast taken off, off early. I stole 10,000 pounds, 10,000 pounds to see you. I forget how it went. Sorry. As I climbed back down, I watched Trixie practice appearing from behind the curtains and bowing. I'm sure it'll be the greatest show ever. And, that, and then that's the end of that one. Finn. Ugh. Hello, I'm back. Uh, like I said, I had to take a break, you know, you yeah, have hard work, and what I'm doing. <laughs> now I had to stop, and this is a couple days later from the last recording, which is why I'm a purple people eater now. Uh, I really liked that, those stories. I thought they were very neat. And uh, I don't know what else to say. I cut out all the times I, uh, cough and drink wawa my water because I sound like this when I don't make a conscious effort to not talk through my goddamn nose that's why it hurts to speak I have I don't know. well that's about it this time uh, there are, I do have a couple ideas of what I would like to read next that uh, one of them, I'm not sure if it got finished or not. I really hope it did, because I, I was enthralled with it at the time, a long, like years ago. Uh, I really enjoyed what I was reading, and I don't know if it got finished. The other one that I was enthralled with, which I only read the first chapter, but I... I thought it set things up very nicely. I do know it got finished, so I can read that one, too. 
when I get to it. So, uh, that's it. Thank you for, for watching. If you'd like more, press the, the, the YouTube buttons that do things. Thank you and good night.